Yo. I wonder if anyone will jump in. I'm really excited. I think we'll just give it a couple minutes. Oh, hey, what's up? What's up, Yusuf? It's my impromptu live sesh, man. All right, the fellows are joining up. Let's go. Let's go. I think I'll maybe wait for a few more minutes, but um, this is really cool. I'm really excited about this thing. If you guys want to geek out with me, then, yo, what's up, Maximize? What up, what up? Okay, so this is going to be a geek session, guys. So get ready to geek out. If you feel like geeking out, stick around. What up? Guys, really just like one more minute. And then I'll just start blabbing. So, what up? What's going on? Ooh, okay, cool. All right, well, let me start then. So, all right. Basically, all right, guys, I'm just so... Basically, this shit is so dope. All right, check this out. So, this is a podcast, Preston Pish. It's called Bitcoin Audible, number 58. And basically, okay, here's what people don't really understand. Everyone thinks that this is the story of Bitcoin, all right? Everyone's thinking, hey, this is a story of different coins I can buy and wow they're they're really going up and then I'll, I'll buy them and that that's the story that I was kind of maybe more on and what people think of when they think of Bitcoin and crypto this is not okay this is not the fucking story of crypto okay this is not the story of Bitcoin actually the story that we are witnessing right now in the macroeconomic world, like just in, you know, our economy and all the prices and all the shit that's going, the fucking shit show that's happening. This, this is a story of the destruction of the interest rate. It's basically the story of how the world's, it, all the world's interest rates get destroyed and they get replaced and subverted by a cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. So, like, that's the fucking story. This is the story of how we watch an, an economy get destroyed, get wiped out, basically, by Bitcoin, by real interest rates. So, I... Have you guys heard this? Have you thought about this? All right, let me spend... I'm going to spend, like, another minute just... So, basically, like, here's what we're going to look for, okay? This is what's going to happen. Normally we go, okay, you know, the pricing of Bitcoin follows a stock to flow model, like the plan B releases stock to flow model. Essentially what it's saying is the miners, the output of Bitcoin, the miners are the ones that really determine um, how the pricing of Bitcoin behaves. That's a stock to flow model. Like the, the business model of how the miners behave, they have the biggest influence right now on the price of Bitcoin. It all follows the halvings. But what they're saying now is that there could be this massive, uh, greater econo macroeconomic force that will impact the price more. So we might break out of the stock to flow model. And here's how it'll happen. So basically, all right, guys, I'm sorry, I'm totally geeking out. But so, okay, so basically what happens, this is how it happens. Once the price of Bitcoin hits $2 trillion, sorry, the market cap, it's two trillion, three trillion, which is like hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, hundred and fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin. Once it starts reaching those levels, what happens is okay. So you have in in the in the bond market right now, and the bond market, by the way, controls the entire fucking economy. The bond market is the anchor of the economy and of the world, all world economies. So what happens is these billion dollar funds. Um, can't move into Bitcoin right now because the market cap's only a trillion. They're gonna fuck, it's gonna fuck up the price and it's just, they don't consider it a stable market. But once it hits three trillion, four trillion, then what you're gonna see is people going, why the fuck am I holding this shitty bond that has a negative yield when I could just go buy a Bitcoin and earn a 6% yield, a stable yield now? 
all indicators would lead that be because of the environment that we're in, uh, Bitcoin is going to start draining the fucking bond market. Like it's going to devour, like and it's going to happen gradually, but hits 2 trillion, boom. And then suddenly it's just the bond market is going to flood. It's going to be like a massive sell off. And that's going to wreak havoc on the Fed because the Fed props up the bond market by buying up the bonds that people are selling. But if everyone's selling, they can't control the yield rate. So the yield's going to explode out of control. It's going to send stock market prices crashing as because people are saying, well, the risk-free rate is really 8%. It's not fucking negative 3%, which means that the pricing of stocks will crash 70 to 80% because of that discount rate. So, okay, so when it hits $3 trillion, it's going to fucking drain the bond market. It's going to send stock market prices crashing, maybe 70%. It's going to drain the real estate market. Like, I don't know. It's just, I feel like, now all of this maybe can happen in a year, but it could happen this cycle. You know? Like, we could see the massive upheaval and destruction of an entire economic system. Like a global economic system. I mean, that, that's the story, man. That's what's get me hyped. That's what gets me hyped. Like, it's the drama of Bitcoin that is making. I mean, of course, it's the price and whatever. I'm making money, whatever. All this shit. We're all getting rich. But like, I think underneath it all, it's just the badassery of what Bitcoin is doing. It's almost like this living creature that's like growing and just devouring everything. You know what I mean? So, it could be the cycle. Now, it might be where there might be a cool off for three months and then it kicks back up and then, but there's something critical about that $100,000, $150,000 Bitcoin because of the market cap and what it allows bond fund managers to do, which they can't do now. It's too small a market cap. And this is like these guys, Preston Pish and some, some guy named Guy, um, fucking uh, Kathy Wood said this, fucking... Grayscale said this shit. They said, look, Bitcoin is not a legitimate risk off yet to stocks, which is what bonds are essentially. They're not a legitimate risk off to stocks yet because large fund managers can't get into a market cap of only trillion dollars. They just can't do it. It's not responsible. Or it's probably against their charter. So yes. Le Chan, yes, you're right. So or was I was yeah so basically just yeah when it hits these numbers guys we need to really be careful about how we you know if if we're going to try to time this market we need to be aware of the macroeconomic picture that's occurring once it hits two to three trillion and what a time to be alive I mean if this happens in this cycle <laughs> can you imagine watching this unfold and just going ha <laughs> ha I have Bitcoin, bitches. I don't even give a shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, anyways, maybe it's a little sensational, but it's not an implausible. And it's all from this podcast. Bitcoin Audible, um, chat number 58 with Preston Pish. So, get on your iPhones, get your podcast, and, you know, pop that on while you're driving. Pop it on while you're doing the fucking laundry. Just like put it, you know, put it in your ear while you're doing your chores. I'm telling you, it's kind of like, it's really going to blow you away, you know. Um, anyways, man. So there's, I mean, what a fucking, what an asset, you know. No, it could all just go to shit for some reason. I don't know how, but you never know. But um, anyways, I'm pumped. I've been telling everyone, <laughs> people who don't even care, I'm just telling them. Like Steve, what what the fuck are you talking about? What is a yield? Um, yeah, exactly. Bitcoin to Uranus. Yeah, exactly. Bitcoin in Uranus. That's really what this is about. So, dudes, dudettes, any questions, any shout outs, anything you want me to say <laughs> before I let you get back to work? Ah, uh, yeah, what is the yield? All right, so let me just explain this. So, uh, you know, actually, I only partially understand this, but basically, it's the interest, it's essentially the interest rate, the return on a bond, the 10 year treasury bond. And this 10 year treasury bond is what steers the entire economy. 
like everything is based on this risk-free rate, you know, all stock prices, all real estate prices, any alternative investments. So yeah, manipulating that yield curve is motherfucking important for the Fed to be able to do. And basically Bitcoin is going to take that power away from them. Like they're not going to be able to control the economy. <laughs> so, I mean, so that might cause some hostile government measures, you know, but I don't know. They'll have to get in or fit in, you know. Um, yo, Phil's cousin, who didn't believe the Bitcoin would go back up. Phil, you need to check yourself, man. You need to check yourself. Or your cousin needs to check himself, man. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, um, I enjoyed explaining that anyway. I, I mean, okay, look, I've only been in this since November. Just a disclaimer. I think almost any price is good to buy in it as long as you have a long enough um, time horizon, you know, because it could crash and, you know, like whatever, then you got to wait for it to go back up. But um, I think over the next two years, I just, I don't see it being anything less than fucking life changing. But, you know, some would disagree. So, you know, but, um, oh, where's my hat? I can wear this hat. What's up? But, um, yeah, man, so I was just pumped to hear that. Again, listen to this thing. Nerd out. It'll blow your mind. Don't don't miss this Game of Thrones drama that's happening in the macroeconomic market. I mean, it's straight Game of Thrones, dude. This is some thug shit. Like, this is like takeovers. People getting fucked up. Markets getting destroyed. Fucking a completely new, like a cataclysm. Like a fucking, like... Yeah, yeah, just one of these events that changes the entire world, you know what I mean? It could be. I'm going to do a thing on ETH. I've been learning about ETH. Yeah. ETH has a big hurdle, I think. But if it clears it, I don't know, it almost seems too good to be true that it would clear it. Um, I bought in probably somewhere around 40,000, 30,000 average DCA because I've been buying for a while. I've been buying, well, I've been buying since November. I just kept buying more. Oh shit, I'm in low power mode. Um, <laughs> oh god. Um, date stories. Yeah, this chick. Um, I don't think she's going to listen to this. This chick that I was kind of hanging with, um, she was kind of like, really interested but then she kind of get lukewarm on me and then finally she texted me this long thing about how like I guess you know she's really like really poor and lives with her family and they're all crammed to this like little house and her sister's boyfriend like they like her they like her sister's boyfriend more than they like her so and he's a douchebag apparently and she hates that and like they've had to call the cops on her twice. They called it, her family called the cops on her twice, like two times. And I'm kind of like, wait a second, what's going on? Like one time, I'm like, okay, maybe your maybe your family's just crazy, but two times that means you're crazy. I don't know. That's probably, but we'll. See. I don't know. Um, I mentioned it at least once, definitely. I go, yeah, man, I was watching the coin and. <laughs> And then if they don't care, I don't mention it again. Um, basically, like, what made you dive so hard into Bitcoin? Um, my back was against the wall, man. I just didn't. It sounds really dumb, but I just didn't want to work. I knew I didn't. I didn't want to work. I didn't want to do anything artsy for money. You know, I just love it too much to try to think about money. I guess. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm screwed. Um, and then Bitcoin came along, and I was like, oh, this is my way out. Yeah. We're gonna do this, or we're just gonna be poor. It's 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 one of, it's one or the other. So I'm not gonna do this, you know, just meekly working away and dying. Just no, I, I wasn't gonna do that. I was an insurance salesman. I know, I know, totally good fit, right? Me selling insurance. Uh, but I had an insurance business. I had you know like a bunch of clients and shit. And I built it. And it was good. Like it, it generated cash. Um, and it wasn't hard to maintain, but I just, ugh, I just couldn't deal. People asking me about stupid shit, just like, my, where's my cards and my billing? Can you, can you get me the invoice from May of 2019? <laughs> like, can, can you go, can you go fuck yourself? <laughs> like, I don't care. Do it yourself, you know. But I would do it because you have to. And then I was just like, fuck this, I'm selling it. So I sold it. 
I sold my business and liquef I just liquefied it and put it right into the coin, plowed that bitch into the coin, took penalties on my IRA, just plowed it all into the coin. Yeah, man, I got tax penalty, whatever, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 10%? Yeah. Yeah, I charge me I don't care. If I'm in Bitcoin a week earlier, that could, that 10% could, yeah, I mean, I'll make that up easily. Um, yeah, dude, I just went, I'm like, fuck it. It's this or bust. I don't care anymore. So, so far, so good. <laughs> so far, so fucking good, man. I mean, so far, it's been great. It's been so much fun. It's been amazing. It's been like learning. It's like it's, it's expanded me as a person. I mean, it's crazy. Like, and then like, I'm inspiring people. Like, you guys are buying Bitcoin because of me, which is just what? that makes no sense. That's crazy. But you know, I'm sure you're. I, maybe I was like the catalyst where I was like, okay, finally, let me just act on my impulses. Let me let me act on my hunches for once and. I think it just kind of pushed people over the edge. Like, I want to do this, and why don't I just do it? I believe in it. Why don't I just do it? So that's really, that's really cool that TikTok can do that. You know, it's just amazing. Social media. Nice. ETH. ETH is, I'm going to do a thing on ETH. I don't know if I, yeah, I already said that to you, but um, yeah, ETH. That could be, that's, that's something, man. We're looking at that hard. No shit. Lechlan. Pain. La clan. Um, that's sick, dude. I wish you guys could chime in. Like, you could, like, speak into this, although it might be, like, a fucking shit show. Um, not at, well, yeah, I have some altcoins. Um, I have uh, some ETH. That's it. Um, I don't know if it's tanking. It's just chopping, right? It's not like 52. 52 is kind of a tank. Below 50, that would be, oof. That would be chilling. Um, yeah, I think it's just chopping. I mean, 58, 57, that's great. That's a great price. <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, those gas prices suck. <laughs> it's, it definitely sucks. It's moving up. I don't want it to move up. I need to... I need to make a purchase tomorrow. Oh, I need it to stay low. Fuck. C5 is fucking crushing my balls right now. Oh, I mean, I don't have a year, man. Let's <laughs> talk about a year. I'm talking about a year. Shit, I'm talking about. I'm talking about five months. Yeah, this. I feel like the futures market gets weird too. The liquidations that are happening, like all the futures options market, I think definitely. That's going to die away, I think, as it gets higher in price and more institutions just are buying and holding. So, yeah, I'm just going to buy as much as I can at all times. So, I mean, basically at all times, yeah. Buy the dip. <sighs> all right, dudes, thanks for joining me. Wow, it's late. You guys are all derelicts for staying up, unless you're in a different time zone. Um, all right. Love you guys. Peace. Stay strong on the coin. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll put this on YouTube, y'all. Yo. All right. Peace.